It's, it's, it's a marvelous thing. It's a marvelous thing to witness the hand of God at work. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it is. And, and, and I pray that we are a people who grow accustomed to seeing, witnessing, and being used of God to be the hands and the feet of God in the earth. Beloved, I need you to know that it is not by coincidence or happenstance that the Lord has decided to break forth the way that he has in the midst of this people as often as he is. It is to bring a level of familiarity with the manifest presence of God. Because once you are able to grow accustomed to him moving and acting in your presence and on your behalf in his house. Yes. Then you can have the confidence that he will do the same in your house. Okay, I feel I feel I need to bring bring some evidence into this. It's good to see Chris. For those that don't know, my, 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 my brother over here came to see me this week. We've been missing each other. He, he works a grooming schedule overnight, and he works Saturday nights into Sunday, so he will sometimes get off at 6 Amen. if he can come make it in the service when it, when it all possible. My man, uh, who has so fallen in love with God, knew he had been missing the encounter. So he said, yo, I'm not waiting until Sunday. He saw I was here, stopped by, and we just had a great time for close to two hours. And then later on that afternoon, he ends up being admitted into the hospital. What, what was looking like potential of a heart attack. We were thinking blood thinners and all manner of things for a 27-year-old. I got a text from his mama who said, not today. Not my baby. And though the doctors thought one thing. Yeah. The manifested presence of God heard and revealed himself in that hospital. Yeah. He was released with no signs of what they thought. All right. yeah. It baffles me that we we desire to be proficient and professional, but then we don't practice. See, the things of God come because he endows you. But it's up to you to put those things into operation, into work. Inside of each of you, is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, inside of you yes. is God. The essence of that which made everything there is right. has been deposited on the inside of you to speak to those things that are not. Amen. Is to speak those things that are not as if they were. You can say to this mountain, be thou removed. They don't have to obey. So, so I, I, I say all this just to set the tone of where you sit. 
consistently for the last several weeks, God has done something supernatural before us so that we might get some practice in. Thank you, Lord. And I don't want you to take that for granted. I don't want you to miss that. I don't want you to overlook that. I want you to know how blessed you are. Thank you, Jesus. And that you don't have to take nothing at face value. Life situations are real. They're real. And God is not going to cause you not to go through this life. But you are more than a conqueror. Yes. 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 yes, God. Okay. Thank you, Lord. All right. I'm gonna preach this message because I wrestled with it too hard not to. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. For those that are, are joining us. That are not in the sanctuary. We thank you for your presence that are joining us alive. I pray that the same manifested, tangible presence of God that's in this place meets you wherever it is that you find yourself. We do want to acknowledge the fact that you are worshiping with us because we're believing God for you just as much as we are believing Him for ourselves. Amen. For those of you all that have your Bibles, if you'd be so kind as to turn to Mark chapter number seven. Mark chapter number seven. We're going to uh, you, focus our attention on verse number eight. Mark seven, verse number eight. If you need a Bible, let one of our ministry technicians know that we should get one to you. And we have it if you are so able. Just say, signal by saying amen. amen. If you need a second to hold on. Mark chapter number 7, verse number 8. Protocol being established. If you can stand, stand. If you don't have the strength of your legs, well, Matt, just stand up. Mark chapter number 7, verse number 8. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to establish your traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is given to God. Then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down and many things you do. Can you grab the neighbor by the hand and stretch across the aisles if you would as we go to God in prayer? I just want to talk to God for a second. You talk about our Father, it's in the precious holy and matchless name that He is our Christ that we come to say. Thank you and good morning. We feel you in this place and we are following your lead. Whatever, however you desire to move that, break forth. We are available to you. Thank you for this time around your word to speak, God. We need a word from you. We're listening. Our hearts and minds are open and receptive to your will, your work, your word. 
and in your way. For it's in the mighty and matchless name of he who is our Christ and all of God's children said. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of God. For the next couple of moments, I just want to talk from the things you do. The things you do. Mother's Day is a set-apart time to honor the nurturer, the one given stewardship by God to be our first teacher. What we know, and as a matter of fact, the foundation of just about everything that we know can just about be credited to our mothers. And as we come to honor them who rightfully deserve the accolades, I can't help but wonder if the traditions we have come to know may have played a role in many leaving the commandments that we have been told to follow. The idea of a commandment is there is a legitimate obstacle in the way that would prevent us from doing what needs to be done. Therefore, a commandment or an order must be given lest the disorder presented by the obstacle persists. In Genesis chapter number one, verse number three, it says, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. He commanded light to come forth and there was light. The text says, Right before Genesis chapter three, chapter one, verse three, in verse two, the reason why he had to give the command. In verse two, it says, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was over the face of the deep. Without the command, let there be light, darkness would have gone unchecked. Paramount to our relationship with God is obedience. Amen. Yes. Oh, beloved, please hear me. If, if you're not getting anything else out of this season, out of the manifested presence of God, it, it needs to be this. Obedience is key to your relationship with God. Yes. Yes. Because disobedience brings disorder. I don't think that you would have to find uh, or go far to find anyone who would argue that in many ways our communities are out of order. Yeah. And that the disorder that we have accepted has brought us to a place where we are on the verge of bringing about a leadership from a financial, tyrannical, irresponsible, perspective. I wonder how many of us have made the connection between leaving what God commanded in his word to establishing what we want in the world. That, that we have what we have based off of what we've cultivated. Jesus here in our text is accosted by what could be described as professional Christians. Those who profess to know God, but have no proof of God in their lives. The, the, the Pharisees and the scribes have come down to where Christ and his disciples are ministering and attempt to mix their ways with God's ways. Their mess with his ministry. The traditions of men often blind us to the will of the Lord. Professional Christians are always trying to get others to see their interpretation of the word right. because their goal is not for transformation, right. but for conformity. Right. Right. They, they, they establish things in order to create separation so that they might be able to hold on to positions and maintain their power. Right. Jesus is a threat an obstacle to every concept of man-made power. 
anything we have done or are doing, any tradition that prevents God from being seen and ultimately prevents us from seeing God, Jesus has come to challenge. Thank you, Lord. I know most people know of the Jesus who's meek and lonely. But I need you to know that he's also the lion of the tribe of Judah. It's so important for us to understand that the very nature of our Christ has come to topple down everything that man has put up in order to make man God. Jesus here in our text does something radical that often those who are focused on themselves miss. He diagnoses the condition of the culture. He reveals the cause and offers a cure for what he diagnoses. Without doing so, the obstacles between us and God would stay empowered to persist. He challenges us here to connect where we are and what we're doing. So if you're all right, I, I got three things I'm going to drop into your spirit, and then I'm going to get out of here. The, the, the first thing that's important for us to understand about what Jesus does here in the text is that he calls our attention to our condition. He calls our attention to our condition. Jesus says, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. He said, you have what you have because of the things you do. <laughs> oh, that might not mean something to a couple of y'all. But there's a handful of us in here who recognize and know that eh, I ain't necessarily happy Come on. with everything I got. Come on. What we do affects what we have. Yeah. By now, just about everybody has heard the definition of insanity. But just in case you've missed it, here it is for you. All right. All right. It is insane. To keep doing what you do, expecting a different result. And though many of us know this, I challenge how many of us comprehend it. Because awareness of this fact and acquisition of this truth are separate things. I, I, I am aware that Chick-fil-A is a profitable endeavor. However, I have not acquired a franchise yet. Yes. The difference between awareness and acquisition is investment. Come on. Mm. Unless you are willing to put something out or until you are willing to, willing to put something in, you cannot profit from what you know. Okay. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me get the 80s babies in here. Knowing is half the battle. G.I. Right. Joe told many of us that. Right. The key is acting upon what you know. That is what produces results. And to, to many of us within the body of Christ, know a whole lot. You got a lot in your head. But we're not acting on what it is that we know. So I have a question for you this morning. What are you doing because you don't want to do what he told you to do? <laughs> what is it that you're doing because you don't want to do what it is that he told you to do? What is it that you keep seeing but ignoring? You, you've heard him say something and yet you turn aside. You turn away, or you just simply put it off. Jesus. You're justifying your rejection of it because of your commitment to something else. Wow. Beloved, let me say to you that delayed obedience is still disobedience. Jesus says in verse number 8 of our text, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. M many of us have told ourselves, I have to grind it out while I can, and I'll have plenty of time to wow. 
fall in love. I got to grind it out while I can because I'll have plenty of time to start a family. I got to grind it out while I can because I'll have plenty of time to serve in ministry, go on missions, or to make a difference. Who told you you had things? <laughs> Where do you get that from? Right. Many of us are telling ourselves, I can't, but it's all good because God knows my <laughs> Many of us are rebuking what we hear God saying because it's inconvenient <laughs> and it's uncomfortable. And quite honestly, we're just simply afraid. Well, God did not give you the spirit of fear, but one of peace, love, and a sound mind. Nowhere in scripture do we find that God promises roads of ease or days filled with sunshine, but really just the contrary. He says that the rain will fall on the just and the unjust. What have you established and elevated above God? What, what tradition have you put into place that always causes God to take a back seat? As we look around and see the state of our world, our country, and our communities, even our families, Jesus says, we have what we have because of the things that we do. Rejecting what he has commanded in order to have what we want has given us what we got. Mm, yeah. You should have shouted before I stood up. Preach, sir. Here's the second thing. Jesus just doesn't diagnose our condition. He diagnoses the cause that created the condition. Right. Mm -hmm. See, now this, this is a, a, a Mother's Day message in, uh, in an effort to help you be better you. Amen. Now, if you just want to simply keep on keeping on, you should have gone to your mama's church. <laughs> and if you at your mama's church, you're right where you're supposed to be. <laughs> He diagnoses the cause that created the condition. Look at verse number 10 of our text. It says, for Moses said, honor our fathers and our mothers. Right. You are where you are because of the things you do. If, if what we do affects what we have, then what we've done affects where we are. Come on. Now, now, just so that we're clear, Mother's Day and Father's Day are days that we set aside time to honor the contributions that they have made in our lives, which is not only admirable, but a case could be made that it's scriptural. However, here's my little caveat. The way in which we do it almost reinforces the curse of not doing it. Come, come on. The text says in Exodus chapter number 20, verse number 12, Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God has given you. We are commanded to honor them. But let me state what may not be as obvious. Ignoring the command to honor results in not enjoying a long time in whatever the Lord gives you. The result of ignoring the command to honor is you will enjoy it for a moment and long for it for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, how's the place you at? Right. <laughs> is the place where you find yourself not satisfying because of the place you're longing to be? Are you constantly seeking and searching for something else and can't find peace in the place where you find yourself? Jesus. If we are commanded to honor, what is allowing us from doing so? The effects of 
the lack of parental involvement is not only devastating to the child, but the collateral damage that it creates in our communities is incalculable. And, and, and we yet carry on with the condition. Uh -huh. We keep thinking that it's the place that we're in that's the problem. Instead of the things that we've done that's put us in the place. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Or potentially the things that we've withheld from doing. Come on. Which has made the place all the more real. Amen. Oh, I came to do some work today. All right. The result of ignoring what God commands us to do culminates in a curse within the community. Hmm. Hmm. Now, let me just pause so that everybody can breathe. Y'all feel, I feel like y'all are holding up there. <laughs> because see, we've grown so accustomed to allowing this moment on Sunday morning to be the setup for how God's blessed us or how we're going to get a blessing or how many steps in order to position ourselves to take advantage of the blessing. But before you can actually participate in the blessing, you got to evaluate if a curse is attached. <laughs> See, you, you, you can't start a health regimen if you got bad eating habits. Right. Ain't no point even coming to the gym if you start out every morning with hog mold right. and <laughs> Cheetos. Yeah. Anyway, pork, pork rinds and potato chips. And it's just, it, you, 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 can't, you can't work out a bad diet. <laughs> So, so I don't know about you, I've decided that I'm going to transform regardless of what it takes. Amen. I'm going to be better for God no matter what I have to go through. Amen. And sometimes one of the best ways in order to do that is to have a mirror set up and start evaluating who I am, what I am, and why I am what I am. Amen. That's good. You would be hard pressed finding the offices of mother or father in isolation in scripture. You'd be hard pressed to find mothers and fathers in isolation in scripture. They exist in concert, in connection with each other. With the exception of death, whenever they appear, they're connected or their connection is always inferred. We have established a tradition of honoring them separately. Come on. We have rejected the command of God when it comes to our homes, causing a curse to be loosed in our community. Go ahead, keep going. Come on, come on, come after this demon. Get it, get it. We have elevated separation and given it a platform in a holy place, creating a tradition that fuels and fosters a dysfunction that we have admitted is devastating within our culture. Now that's insane. Stung me for messing up your day. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If what you do affects what you have and what you've done affects where you are, then doesn't it stand to reason if you don't like what you have, then simply change what you're doing? <laughs> Jesus does not just simply diagnose our condition. He diagnoses the cause that created the condition. Yes. It said, honor your father and mother. Yeah. Come on. So that your days may be long oh. in the land yes. God is giving you. I gotta stop because I'm headed on my third point. I'm just about out of here. But just think about that for a second. God is the one who's going to give you what it is that you want, but he's only going to give it to you if you honor the command. If you don't honor the command, stop asking for the land. Oh, yes, sir. it's tight, but it's right. It's okay. It is. It's okay. I, I, I just heard somewhere that he promised me to be the lender. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And not the borrower. Come on. If I find myself 
perpetually borrowing. There's nothing wrong with the supply. Here's the third thing. Y'all all right? I promise. We're going to celebrate at the end. Just hang with us. Ain't nobody left yet. I still see you. Shut the doors. <laughs> Jesus just doesn't diagnose the condition. He doesn't just diagnose the cause that created the condition. But here's the third thing. He reveals the cure for the condition. Mm. Right. Jesus goes deeper. He does not just pull Exodus 20, 12. He links it to 2017. Verse 10 says, Whoever reviles your father or mother must surely die. Right. It's and versus or. Yes. It's and versus or. Honor your father and your mother. Whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. Honor comes as a result of and, however, death will always follow or. Oh, wow. Wow. That's good. That's good. When, when the father and mother relationship are not connected, anything said against father or mother carries death. I need you to know, I, I recognize, I feel all of what y'all are trying to shoot back Come at me, on. but you just don't know. Come on. Right. You have no idea what I had to go through or what that person was like or this, that, and the third. I hear you. Right. Come on. But the Bible says you will know them by their fruits. fruits. Come on now. If you're him and hard. <laughs> I wasn't going hard and him and I was about to say something else. And the Lord got my tongue. <laughs> but instead, it ends with complaining. Come on. <laughs> then check. Coming out. Come on. Come on now. The command is to honor. And the command comes with a curse if honor is not given. Come on. Come on. There's no gray area in right. that. Right. And I don't care what the culture says right. nor what they did. That's right. God is the one. Who it, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Come on. Come on. God is the one who will defend you. Yes. He will uphold you. On, he will keep and protect you. Yes, Lord. Don't yes. you get in it. Yes. Stay yes. above the fray. Yes. Thank you, God. Should, should. Yes. So, so. Should, should. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Let God use you. Speak, Jesus. Who did that? Move. Get out the way. <laughs> I, 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 felt, I felt Luda just. Come on, man. <laughs> I told you this is all. Y'all gotta pray. So could the cracks in our community be the result of a curse because no honor could be given due to the, the, the traditions that we established, which promote. That which is incomplete. It's damn near impossible to honor that which can't be beheld. It's one thing to have an incomplete model, but there is a myriad of a difference for the reason as to why that model is incomplete. But in some cases, we have marginalized and maligned. We have dishonored one another in the process, inviting death as a result. Jesus. We have to watch our conversations. Come on. Uh -oh. You have to watch what you say. Just because you separated don't give you license to say what you want to say. Come on. Come on. 
Because based off of what you say, come on, amen, will determine what you're about to see. Come on now. And if I be so bold as to have you look at what you don't like seeing, check what you said. Come on, come on. Yes. Yes, God. Wow. Good job. You've set up a tradition that puts ceremony around that which separates. Not realizing disobedience has given birth to disorder. Right. Yeah. Say that again. I, I, I gotta I gotta throw this in here, not to ruin anybody's day. Speak. But we have across this great nation of ours honored this day for a good reason. Mm -hmm. We should have never separated it. to disorder right. yeah. Amen. Yeah. in less than a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be back here. No, let me rephrase that. In less than a month, half of us will be back here. Come on, come on. Come on now. Speak. Yes. We've ignored the command of God yeah. and established the tradition that gives license to disorder. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, yes. There's yes. nothing wrong with the honoring. Right. But in the honoring, we're actually dishonoring. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say this, and I, 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 I get, I, I, I get, in part, where it come from. Come on, I got your back. It's okay. <laughs> but, but this, this right here, this right here, this right here. My mama was my daddy too. I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand. But as a daddy? Right. Make it plain. It's not possible. But it's, it's, it's not possible. Right. The curse follows a false equation. Right. The curse follows a false equation. A half plus zero doesn't give you one. But by God's design, you cannot have a whole from a half. And the problem is we keep looking for a whole, but you've only had a half, which is why it's dysfunctional. <laughs> now let me just set the record straight. Yeah. I grew up with half. Right. Come on. That's right. I grew up with half. And my half did as much as she could. But I'm not whole from that hat. Come on, man. Real talk. Real talk. Yeah. No change. Yeah. Come on now. And to think that I'm whole when all I've ever had was half, yes. then in turn puts me in situations yeah. where I try to be whole but am not equipped. unnecessary challenges because I didn't end up developing the weight I need yeah, yeah, for the situation yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in because I falsely believe I was whole when I was had. Yeah. Now, now, now. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can make it off of half. Yeah. What you can't do is attempt to make it off of half believing you whole. That's right. Because you will start to look for things to fill in spaces yeah. that you don't admit you still got because you believe you hold. But when you admit that you have because that's all you've ever had, now you can look for proper partnering. Yes. Yeah. 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 Too many of us have gotten into relationships with people who said that they were whole. Come on. Right. Right. You got broken because you were only half perpetrating like you were whole. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
So now, huh? you only started out with half, got broke all up, right. perpetrating the behold, right. and now you a fourth. Come on. Come on. We, we, we persisted in establishing the line as the truth. Yes, yes. We, we, we persisted in establishing the line as the truth. And, 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 and look, if God's going to be God, he knows who you are. Yeah. Not only does he know who you are, he's got you. Yes, he does. Oh, beloved, please hear me. He's got, he's got you in however or whatever state you're in. Hallelujah. But, 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 but hear me, hear me, hear me, yeah. hear me, hear me, hear me. He can't fully be himself to you if you're not clear about you. Come on. Yeah. And he can't bring to you what you need for having to counteract the traditions that you want. Yeah. Yes. Baby, you, you don't, you don't, you don't need a home when you have. You need another half. Because if you go for someone who's whole in your half, you'll never be good enough for them. You'll never feel like you're worthy enough for that. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Well, without knowing the truth, you are stuck to be in bondage. Yes. Yes. My God. Amen. We persisted in establishing a lie as the truth creating an obstacle between us and God. God can't speak because you keep looking for something that he's not trying to give you, and he's not going to give you something you can't handle. Come on. Come on. He said, I will supply all of your needs. Come on. Your needs. Your needs. But unless you do a need assessment, there's a good chance you're going to keep inviting what you want. And many of us have lived long enough to know I've gotten a couple of things that I wanted. And it was a hot mess. I would have gladly dealt with less without the stress. You're just too much. You do too much. You offer too much. Shut up. Why are you always? That ain't for everybody. I'm talking about me. Perpetrating as a whole when I was a half. And I got somebody that was a whole mess. Texas. We have made void the word of God by our traditions. And we are holding and handing this down. The things we do. If the curse came from the things we have done, to eliminate the connection between and only to establish a tradition of or, then knowing this, I gotta close with what do you want to do? Knowing this, what, what are you going to do? Order comes as a byproduct of obedience. Let me just say that. If you're not experiencing peace in your life, then understand order only comes as a byproduct of obedience. Deuteronomy chapter number 30, verse 19, is not going to show up there because this was a last minute download, it says this, I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, 
that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob. He, say, he set before you life and death. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Blessings and curses. And then he encourages us, choose life. So, preacher, what, what am I supposed to do with all this, man? You handed me flowers, you fed me donuts, you participated and watched a miracle, and now you messed up my theology. You messed up my tradition in the way that I thought about it. What, what am I supposed to do? Here, here's my answer to that. Here's the cure. Have faith. Come on. Okay, I know that sounds really trite. Have faith. If, if what we do affects what we have, if what we've done affects where we are, if the things we do have created the things we have, and you know, and you want, and you need things to still be different, right. then all it will take is for you to have faith. Wow. You know why? Because Hebrews 1 tells us, now faith is the assurance of things. You missed it. If it was the things you did that got you the things you have, then now if you have faith, you get new things. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the Conviction of things not seen. It's not too late. There is still something that can be done now. Yes. Solomon told us the thing that we can do now in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. He said this, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Right. If the curse came out of your mouth, come on. Come on now. the blessing now can. That's right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Amen. I, I need just a handful of us to be real. I need, I need, I need just a handful of us to be real. If, if, if things have died or are dying around you, I dare you to start talking differently. I, I dare you. I don't care what happened then. Now talk different things. You, you can say something, and even those things that have died will have to come back to life. Oh, I feel like I need to give you Bible. Jesus rolled up on a funeral procession, and, and, and two sisters of a dead man came. If you had only been here, then my brother would not have died. Oh, she said, woman, don't you know that I am the resurrection and the life? Just, just, just hold on. Bring me to where you buried him. Yes, yes. He stood outside of the tomb, uh -huh. said, roll the stone away, uh -huh. and simply said, Lazarus, yes. come forth. Yes. And a dead man came popping. Yes. I'm here to tell you that there are some things that have died in your past that are bound up because of the way you talked about them. Yes. But if you would reverse the curse. If you would just talk differently about it now, if you would just hold it in honor now, you will start to see those things that died before will come to life now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, 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 we've created a culture that's... Huh. Establish the tradition of tearing things down. We, we have bought in to disorder. So therefore we have no problem being disobedient. And we have normalized dysfunction. Come on now. 
then we have the audacity to honor it in holy places, ignoring the commandment. Honor your father and your mother. For if you revile father or mother, death comes. Come on now. Come on now. We are getting ready to be led by a terrible set of leaders. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. This truth. And the way we got here Come on. is because of the things we do. That's right. Stuff that we have normalized. Yes. That even while we're talking about it, we know it's wrong. But because everybody talking about it, everybody doing it, we might as well just do like everybody. And everybody going to hell. Everybody. 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 Gasoline draw on, going to blow it wide open. But since we all together, we have ignored the command to establish our own traditions. Yes. I don't care what that joker did or did not do. That's right. For whatever reason, unbeknownst to us and held in the annals of eternity, God chose them for you. Right. Mm -hmm. That's we right. get to choose everything else but our parents. That's right. That's right. That's right. And crazy if it wasn't for them. Come on. Say that. Man. You wouldn't be here. That's right. So if you can't honor them for nothing else, honor them because it made you. Jesus does not just diagnose our condition, he diagnoses the cause that created the condition and he reveals the cure for the condition. The things you say become the things you see. The word made flesh is now saying to flesh, the words you speak will become flesh for you. I'm done. Being a Christian ain't for punks. Okay. It's not for punks, but for folks who just like Manby pamby kind of messages, things that just make you feel good all the time. I need you to know that is not of God. If you came here for three steps and a turnaround or a 12-step program to get out of your situation, I need you to know that it don't work like that. We might have some times when we fling in oil and people are falling out, but some of the times you need to sit your happy hind parts in there and take that. Yeah. Take that. Okay. <laughs> Here in our text, Jesus chin checks professional Christians. Those who have grown accustomed to making faith fit their circumstances instead of those who have been called by him to conform to be like him. This is why I love Christ. Because you cannot be Savior if you don't bring to light the things that require salvation. Right. And once you are saved, there is a sanctifying process that will forever be a part of who we are until we see him face to face. Don't ever get to the point where you believe that because you've been saved for as long as you've been saved, that there still aren't things that you need to work on. Amen. Until we see him face to face, he will always reveal an aspect of him in a manifold glory that causes us to stretch beyond ourselves so that we can become more than who we've known ourselves to be. So that when we look back over our own life, we can bear witness to the difference between the things we used to do and the things we currently do. Our communities are crippled because we've grown accustomed to our houses not being whole. And at some point, we need to start crying loud and sparing none that the design of God is that you be whole. Amen. That's right. God can help you. Yes. Thank you. 
for it. But only if you ask for it, you know that you need it. And if you want to rock half, rock on. Come on. But rock it as half. So not the spirit now. Y'all yeah. <laughs> would be some kind of pissed <laughs> if I showed up here on Father's Day and I'm a mother too. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. That's how, that's how it is. That's how it is. Make it plain. We discourage. My kids deserve more. Amen. They don't need to struggle the way that I did. They don't need to sit waiting and wondering. Come on. I did everything, dude. I mean everything, and it was amazing. But. Here to take God. Can I fill those gaps? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Devin. Christ is our good physician. He not only diagnoses our disorder and discovers our disobedience, he prescribes the cure. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I've come by here today in order to talk to those who have been given charge to give birth to life through labor. Doing what you have done has not been easy, and the truth of the matter, no one else could do the things that you do. But the work was never designed to rest on your shoulders alone. He told me to tell you the things that you need to do is come to him, and he will give you rest. But it will be his will, and you will find rest. Amen. You will find that he is no shorter than his word, that he'll do what he said. Come to Christ with the things you do, and he will give you rest. Come to Christ with the things that you do, and he will give you rest. Come to Christ with the things that you do, and he will give you rest. Whatever head bowed and I shut. Oh, wait. Hmm. Lord, you are an awesome wonder. And I pray, Lord God, that something was said that helps to move us into a place where you can be seen. We need you. We need to hear from you. We need a touch from you. We need to be transformed more into the image of you. But we can only do that if we are honest and worship you in spirit and in truth. So on this day, we thank you, God, for the laborers, for those in whom you have tasked to give birth. Yes, As a man, I could never. But thank you, God. I don't have to. Because together, we bring about your will. Yes. So in the same way, God, that it took both of us to reveal something new, let us not keep looking for something new without looking for someone to help us do it. We honor the mothers in here today. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. For their sacrifices, for the weight that they carry, for the way that they care, for the burdens that they bear, for the stretch marks they acquired, for the sleepless nights, the wiping of our tears, and the encouragement of, of us when we feel fearful. God, I pray that you bless them tremendously from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, bringing the light and the love of their salvation to the forefront of their mind, knowing 
that they can rest in you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you put your hands together and bless them? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. See, I couldn't do this on any other day. So I had to keep y'all from shouting beforehand. <laughs>